a smile. Okay. Today we're talking about circles again. In, in, uh, one more again. Okay. Today we are talking about circles again. Incidentally, we're talking about arcs, which are parts of circles. Now we're not talking about the space in between here. We're actually talking about the line of the circle when I say an arc. A central angle, that's an angle, has a vertex at the center of the circle. B here is a central angle because its vertex is at the center of circle B. A minor arc is the smaller section of the circle. So this is minor arc AC because it connects A to C. The symbol for an arc is a little there. It'll go from A to C or from C to A. It doesn't matter what order you put them in because it's going from one to the other and that's all. Minor arcs always have two letters where it starts and where it ends. Major arcs are the larger section of the circle. This, in this case, it's A, D, C. And I know it has to go through D. That means it has to be the larger section of the circle because we actually put the D in there. Major arcs have three letters. Minor arcs have two letters. Major arcs have three letters. Have to have three. So that's why I had to make sure I wrote a D up here so that I could get this major arc in there. Minor arcs always measure less than 180 degrees because we're talking about a smaller section of the circle, so it has to be less than half. Major arcs, because we're talking about a bigger section of the circle, happens to be more than 180 degrees because it has to be more than a half. A semicircle, another good word for you, is exactly 180 degrees. And since it is a semicircle and you don't know which side you want to go on, you have to be sure you always give three letters for a semicircle. So three letters when you draw a semicircle, three letters when you have a major arc, two letters when it's a minor arc. Now, here's the really cool piece of information. The measure of an arc is equal to the degrees of the central angle. So if I were to tell you that this was I don't know, it kind of looks like 90 degrees, but we'll make it 70 degrees right there, then that means that this arc, the measure of AC, is also going to equal 70 degrees. It does not matter how long this radius is, we're gonna call that 70 degrees. We're not getting a length of this, we're actually just getting a degree measure from A to see. Now how many degrees is it all the way around the circle? That's right, it's 360 degrees all the way around the circle. So if I tell you that the measure of minor arc AC is 70 degrees, then you should be able to say 360 minus 70 degrees is equal to the measure of arc ABC. Take 360, the whole thing, take out that 70, and you get what's left, which is the measure of arc ADC, which in this case happens to be 290 degrees. Not that it's important, just saying that it's there. We have something called arc addition, and that's what it is. You can add up these arcs to get certain things. Okay, so there's all that. Now, let's go on to something a little. Okay. Uh, I guess we'll do this one. All right. <clears throat> Adjacent non overlapping arcs share one point and no more. So, when I'm talking about circle, I don't know, B, we'll go back to that one. When I'm talking about circle B. If I have an arc up here, We'll call it AC. And I have one down here. We'll call it C. And I have one over here. We'll call it E. 
adjacent non-overlapping arcs might be arc AC and arc CD. Because they share that one point C. But if you want to talk about an overlapping arc, if I have arc AD and arc CD, they overlap because they both share more than just one point. They share this whole section. AD goes from here all the way around to here, and AC, sorry, CD goes here. And since they overlap, they can't be adjacent, non-overlapping. So if you were talking about non-adjacent, you might have arc AC and arc DE. These are not adjacent because they're not directly side by side and they do not share a point. Since A to C doesn't share a point with D to E, these can't be adjacent, non-overlapping. It's that simple. If I were to tell you that this is 40 degrees, and this is 40 degrees, and this one is 30 degrees, then you could say that the congruent arcs in this case would be AC is congruent to DE. I think it's a better arc. Is congruent to arc DE because they have the same degrees. But in addition to that, you can get even more particular and you can say, because it doesn't matter if they overlap or not in this case. So because they didn't say anything about it, we're just talking about congruent arcs. I could say that arc AB, which is 70 degrees, is congruent to arc CE, which is also 70 degrees. So you can have both of those. There is that part of the board. Now let's go talk about this part of the board. I need some better colors. Well, ooh, pink. Green, pink, and purple. Maybe we'll see what happens. Okay. It says, if a diameter, so I'll start by drawing a diameter. I like it. We'll call it a diameter. It doesn't even look like a diameter, but we're going to call it one. It looks better up there than it does up there. Anyway, if a diameter is perpendicular to a chord, so now I'm going to draw in my chord and perpendicular. And we'll call this circle C chord AB. If it is perpendicular, like it says, then it has to bisect this diameter, has to bisect this chord even though it doesn't look like it. And it also bisects its arc. So if I call this point D, because it's where the diameter came out, then we know that arc AD has to be congruent to arc DB. Just like we know that line segment AE has to be congruent to line segment EB. Now it doesn't say anything about this length. All it does is talk about this chord and this arc.
The one on the bottom, I want to give you a new circle. You're going to see my little circle plate now. I'll put it over here. Circle plate usually is a lot better than that. But anyway, I can clean it up a little bit. Okay, the longer the cord, the closer to the center of the circle the cord is. It's late, I need to be in bed. Not doing that. But that's all right. I still love you. So, if I have a cord over here, and I have a cord over here, the longer the cord is, the closer it is to the center of the circle. The further away the cord is, the thinner it's going to be. If you have two cords that are the same distance away from the center of the circle, like that, then that means that your cords also have to be congruent. And the only way to measure a cord with the distance from the center of the circle is by drawing a perpendicular to it. That's how you measure how close it is to the center. Drop a perpendicular to it. That's the radius you'd want to use to measure it by. Okay. Now, just like last time, you have homework that kind of stretches you a little bit, and I think that's okay. This one has more numbers in it than last time did. I think you might actually like that part of it. Makes it a little bit less out there, a little bit more tangible, easier to understand. So the classwork for this section is numbers 1, 9, 13, and 21. And the homework for this section is numbers 11, 15, 23, and 25. And the page that these are on are page 365. Okay. Have a lovely day.